Yo, 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 this your boy, The Real McCoy, coming at you. Talking about football, for all my football fans, man. NFL, uh, I did a, uh, um, a preseason prediction video as far as who I thought was going to win the MVP and all the awards. Uh, hopefully, I remember to put that video down in the, in the description box. But this here are my picks for um, after the season, you know what I mean? Um, before the playoffs begins, the regular season just ended yesterday. Um, and, um... As far as the awards, who I think are, are going to win all the NFL awards. Uh, so we'll jump right into it, man. Um, as far as the comeback player of the year, uh, I thought about maybe uh, Doug Martin, the running back for the Bucks. Uh, he was only second to, uh, he was, I think he's what, a few yards, 30, 40 yards behind Adrian Peterson for the rushing title this year. But I was like, you know, Doug had a pretty good um, rookie year, kind of slipped off the, the last two, you know what I mean, things like that. But for me, as I thought about him, but for me, the comeback player of the year, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go with Larry Fitzgerald, a wide receiver for the Cardinals, man. But at his age, I didn't think, you know, not saying he couldn't do it anymore, just that I, I, I didn't, you know what I mean? Hey, I, I, I didn't think he had it in him, you know what I mean? But I think he had over, uh, over 100 catches, over 1,200 receiving yards, like 9 or 10 touchdowns. The Cardinals 13 and 3, so... And the record-wise, that, that's also what helped, you know what I mean, team success. I do factor that in uh, a little bit, team success, but I think that I'm, I'm definitely going to give that to uh, Larry Fitzgerald and comeback player of the year. Now, uh, coach of the year, uh, I had a few candidates in mind. I thought about maybe Andy Reid, what he did with the Kansas City Chiefs. They're the five seed in the playoffs. They started off one and five, ended up being 11 and five. They won the last 10 games. Or the regular season, they're going in confident, red hot, things like that. Uh, I thought of uh, he was a candidate. Uh, I thought about um, Mike Zimmer, the head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Just last night, Sunday night football, they go up to Lambeau and um, and, and they beat on uh, the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers, things like that, to win the division. 11, 11 and five, yeah. Uh, he gave him a nod, and I thought about um, Bill O'Brien, the head coach for the Houston Texans. Uh, I was like, man, I, I thought it was tough, you know. But I think with the Chiefs, I, I, I kind of had them as a wild card, or right there on the edge, you know. So there were kind of some expectations there. Uh, what what I try to look for in Coach of the Year is I try to find either something that or uh, Ron Rivera. He was also a candidate, fifteen and one, <laughs> you know, fifteen and one last on um, this this season. Cam Newton's um, you know, MVP candidate, things like that. But I, he he was he was there too. So I was looking for a team who does you know way above expectations and things like that. Kind of like I don't think most people were expecting the Panthers to go fifteen and one. I didn't. Um, but those four are my candidates. But you know, for me, I, I decided to go with uh, Bill o, um, Bill O'Brien, Houston Texans coach, because I think nobody really expected them to make the playoffs, let alone win the division. I had the Indianapolis Colts winning winning the uh, AFC South. No doubt about that, you know what I mean? Uh, I think most of us would probably agree with that coming into the year. Most of us had the Colts, you know what I mean, taking that next step, you know what I mean, wild card, divisional round, championship, winning the AFC, you know what I mean, which I did have them win the AFC. But, um, but I found them go with Bill Brown, Houston, Texas, man. All the quarterback carousel they got going through there. They even had Brandon Whedon <laughs> win them a game, come from my Cowboys. So, I mean, it's... It, it, it was it was a good year for the Texans, no doubt about it, man. That they got the Chiefs wild card weekend, so that's my coach of the year, offensive rookie of the year. I, I had Jameis Winston winning it coming into the season. He was my pick. I, I had maybe I thought about maybe Todd Gurley, uh, the running back for the Rams. I thought about Amari Cooper, the wide receiver for the Raiders, things like that. When the season started, though, know, Jameis Winston struggled. Um, Todd Todd Gurley kind of picked it up, you know what I mean? I, few weeks into the season and uh Amari Cooper started off red hot he kind of faltered a little bit at the end but a lot of that could be you know Derek Carr is quarterback you know on uh, he's on his on his second year as well so and then um David Johnson for the Arizona Cardinals he had a pretty good year the, the running back he, he had a pretty good year man but if I had to pick I think I'm gonna go with Todd Gurley man he finished third third of top five at least as far as uh rushing yards behind Doug Martin Adrian Peterson uh, I think he finished third, you know what I mean? I think he had like t double digit touchdowns, I believe. I think right at 10, things like that. Uh, on the 200 carry. So I'm, I'm going to go with Todd Gurley. 
I thought about maybe Jameis Winston, you know what I mean? But I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Top Gurley and, and for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, for me, I, I thought it was kind of an easy pick. Uh, Marcus Peters, the cornerback from uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he, he tied for the league, league in interceptions with uh, Reggie Nelson. The safety for the Bengals with eight, man. Um, yeah, I, I really don't. I really, in my opinion, I really didn't see anybody else. Marcus Peters had a good year, man. The Chiefs fin finished off real strong, so I, I, I definitely I, I got Marcus Peters. You know, what I mean, no doubt about it. Coming out of Washington or the University of Washington, I believe. Yeah. Now the offensive player of the year, man. This is this one here is tough, man. Um, because usually some people say offensive player of the year is MVP. But the reason why they do it, offensive player, defensive player, and MVP, because the defense, a defensive player can't win MVP. Not likely. You know, J, some, some thought J.J. Watt should have won it. I believe uh, Lawrence Taylor did. I could be wrong on that. I think he did. But um, so that's why some just considered offensive player of the year. You know what I mean? Like last year, Aaron Rodgers won MVP. But DeMarco Murray from the Cowboys won offensive player of the year. But, um... For me, man, this this is tough, man. This is tough, man. You can go to the second half of the season. The way Russell Wilson finished finished the second half of the season was big time. Like 24, 25 touchdowns, only one or two interceptions. Big time, man. Uh, Carson Palmer, he he's an MVP candidate. Russell Wilson's an MVP candidate. Um, we can go with Cam Newton, Tom Brady, man. Antonio Brown, a wide receiver for the Steelers. Julio Jones, wide receiver for the um for the Atlanta Falcons. Both of those guys, I think both had over 1,800 receiving yards, I believe. Both of them had almost 2,000 I mean, just absolutely incredible, man. Um, I, I don't this, this one is absolutely tough. Absolutely tough, man. <sighs> I, I don't know. I, I was kind of... I, I don't. This, this one is tough, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me come that come back to that. I mean, that that one's tough. That one's tough, man. Uh, defensive player of the year. I thought about Khalil Mack um, for the Raiders, but uh, you know, if he would if he would have led the league in sacks, I probably would have maybe gave it to him, but he didn't. Um, and you know, team success. Raiders didn't make the playoffs. I thought about maybe Josh Norman, the cornerback for the Panthers, making a case. You know, one of the better corners in the league. But, uh, you know, he didn't get a lot of interceptions. Maybe because the teams didn't really go his way, but he didn't get a lot of picks. I thought about Marcus Peters, the rookie out of um, Kansas City. Had a good year. Things like that. Um, Reggie Nelson had eight picks. But for me, I'm, I'm going to go with J.J. Watt. I'm, I'm going to go with J.J. Watt, man. 17 and a half sacks. MVP candidate last year from on defense. Uh, had three sacks. I think three. he finished the season with three sacks yesterday for 17 and a half. Just an absolute monster, J.J. Watt. An absolute monster, man. Uh, I got him defensive player of the year. Uh, MVP, a lot of candidates. Offensive player of the year. Offensive player of the year and MVP have. I mean, it's a lot of candidates, man. It's a lot of candidates. You make a case for a lot of guys. And you're like, oh, okay, I understand that. You know what I mean? Uh, Tom Brady, um, Carson Palmer, Andy Dalton, until he got hurt. He, he was having a pretty solid year. Uh, the way Russell Wilson finished the season was just absolutely incredible. Cam Newton doing, he had like, I think, two games this year where he threw five touchdowns and no interceptions. I think he had over 40 total touchdowns, I believe. I think he threw 30, I think he was tied for second in the league with touchdown passes with 35. And Carlson Palmer threw 36. Uh, Cam Newton threw less than 4,000 yards, you know what I mean? Uh, most of these other quarterbacks did, even Russell Wilson. Uh, I think he had 10 interceptions, but I think he had at least, I think he had over 40 total touchdowns. I believe, right at 40. See, so 35 touchdowns, and I think he had at least five rushing touchdowns on the year. I know he had one yesterday against the Bucks with a QB sneak against the Bucks. But uh, but if I had to pick, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Super, Super Cam. Cam Newton as MVP, man. 15-1. You know, if a lot of people love team success, 15-1. Best record in the field, number one seed in the NFC. Um, they lost week 16 at Atlanta. It just all the things he do, giving giving footballs to the to fans, to the kids in the crowd, the dancing. You know, what I mean, it's you know he, he's doing his thing, man. You know, it's, it's, and the whole team, it's all it's all evolved around Cam Newton. It's, it's all Cam. 
I'm not saying these other guys aren't valuable, you know what I mean, things like that, but I, I think definitely Cam Newton. Now, I, I think with him losing Week 16 to the Falcons kind of closed the gap a little bit, but the Falcons, I mean, uh, they lost to the Falcons, but the Patriots, they lost their last two. Uh, the last six weeks, they're two and four. Carson Palmer, I mean, they got beat down yesterday by the Seahawks. Uh, Andy Dalton was hurt, things like that. Um, Russell Wilson, I mean, whew, he, the way the way Russell Wilson finished the season, man, incredible, absolutely incredible, man. I think he was thirty-four touchdowns, eight eight interceptions, I believe Russell Wilson, over four thousand passing yards, just incredible. But I think I'm, I'm I think I'm gonna go with um Cam Newton as the MVP. Um, back to the offensive player of the year, man. This this one is tough, man. See Julio Jones, Tony Brown, Carson Palmer, uh, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. Man, this one is uh, uh this one is tough, man. Um, I mean, somebody somebody may have to share this award. I, I don't. This one is tough, man. I think I'm, I'm gonna lean towards. I think I'm gonna lean towards Tom Brady. Just you know because because it's Tom Brady. You know what I mean? Um, man, I, I guess I lean towards Tom Brady, man. I'm, I'm thinking Russell Wilson, though. I'm, I'm thinking about Russell Wilson because the way he finished the season. he It was incredible the way he finished the season as far as the touchdown to interception ratio. Just incredible. Uh, but I think I'm going to lean towards Tom just, you know, you know, Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? But... Ah, Russell Wilson is right there, Carson Palmer as well. But you know, week 17, the Seattle go up to Arizona and they beat the Cardinals down, man. 36 to 6. I believe that's the final score. 36 to 6, man. And um uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with Tom, but I'm I'm thinking Russell Wilson. You know what I mean? I'm thinking Russell, but that's who I got. Larry Fitzgerald, comeback player of the year, uh rookie of the year. Offensively, I got Todd Gurley. Defensively, I got um Marcus Peters. Defensive player of the year, I'm going to go with J.J. Watt. Coach of the year, Bill O'Brien for the Houston Texans. MVP, Cam Newton. Offensive player of the year, <sighs> I, I guess Tom. I think I'm going to go with Tom. But the way Russell Wilson finished the season, the way Carson Palmer played all season, that that one, that, that award is going to be tough. Some say MVP could be tough, you know. But I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, with, with Tom. Slight nod to Tom as offensive player of the year, man. And I got Kim MVP. Let me know what you guys think, man. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Uh, who you who you guys got winning awards, things like that. Hopefully, I re remember to leave my video I did for, uh, I think I did a preseason prediction video as far as awards and things like that. Let me know what you guys think, man. I'm a football fan. You know, who, who all you guys got winning and stuff like that. I'm, I'm excited about the playoffs. They start this weekend. I'm pumped up, man. Anyway, I'm a football fan. Let me know what you guys think, man. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And it's your boy, The Real McCoy, man. I'm out. Peace.